Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing the Origin Jumpers 325A. Let's jump right in. Alright guys, welcome back. So this right here is the Origin 325A and while we are exiting Hurston, I just want to tell you a little bit of information about the ship. So this ship is one of the four variants that you can get that's part of the Origin 300 series line of ships. As you can tell, if you guys have played Star Citizen before, the Origin 300i is pretty much all the same, chastity wise. You know, Origin likes to keep with a more luxurious design. This one in particular, the 325A, is the only one out of all four to have a size 4 nose turret, which makes it more ideal for players that want to fight, you know, want to do bounties, missions, claim jumper missions, and all that good stuff. Alright, so we're here at the pledge store at the Star Citizen website. I'm going to show you guys a pretty cool thing about the 300 series that you can do. So we're just going to jump over here to Origin Jump Works. And we're going to find here, the th so here's the base model of the 325A right here. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will find the other variants. We've got the Pathfinder, the 350R, and as well as the 325, which is the one we're going to be going for. If you click on it, you know, you get the you get the options, the buying options. You can click through these pictures. One cool thing that is that it comes uh, premium with the uh, 300 series is that you can customize it. So if you click on that button, this little UI will show up and as you can see, it's just a little customizational screen. You got different angles of your ship. You got your different paint paint colors right here. This is the one that I went for. Um, one, one thing that I don't really don't like about this is that you have to pay for, um, you know, these paints right here, which really doesn't make a difference in game. I mean, I guess it kind of works, right? Microtransactions. But other than that, um, you know, I went ahead and went with this one right here, which is a sterling one. I just like the silver color to it, you know. Um, the, my 300 eye that I previously had before upgrading to 325 was the black obsidian one. This one's really awesome. It's kind of like a stealth fighter. But with that out of the way, um, we can move down here to the cockpit area. You know, you just have different inserts. You can have a wooden insert. You can have red aluminum if you want pay a little bit extra you can pay for a carbon fiber a yellow carbon fiber yellow yeah, all that good stuff so yeah just different um different settings for customization you have different seats um different finishes how you can even change your bed if you want check this out so if you you know if you want this bed with origin logo and the lettering you know if you want a simple bed i want i went with a simple bed just because there really isn't any gameplay value <laughs> other than to sleep on it with the bed. Um, coming down here, we got the packages, which to be honest with you guys, I really wouldn't recommend buying just because you could upgrade these um, components in the game later on. So right now, I really don't see any uh, value unless you really want to go for the top of the line. This one right here, which will add another $30 to your total here. So you can see all these the different... Um, components and whatnot i would really suggest those sticking with the classic package just to save some money um you, you could definitely buy all of these in the game anyway so you also have decorations which really have no purpose in the game right now they're just there to be there you can't actually brew coffee you can't actually make food or place music from your speakers so you know i'm eventually in the future when the game is out of alpha they're probably going to be you know adding these uh, functions into the game but as of now they're only here for decorations on the nose we do see a size 4 m6a laser auto cannon on the wings we do have two size 3 shredder ballistic repeaters and we do see two missile racks both of these are going to be MSD-322 missile racks, which hold 
total of two Dominator II missiles on each wing. And down right in the middle, inside where the cargo bay should be, we do have the size 5 543 missile rack, which can hold a total of four Arrestor III missiles. I would say this would be a very good missile count for such a small ship. Even the Nose Cannon itself is another plus. It definitely is comparable to the Avenger Titan. Now this ship comes with a mediocre stock loadout and while you could definitely demolish smaller hostile ship and bounties, you won't really be able to efficiently destroy ships in the bigger mission quests. In this mission I'm going to show you guys, I was barely able to finish this bounty before my ballistic repeaters ran out and I had to rely on a slow ungimbled laser cannon, which eventually completed the job, but it did take me quite a bit. So what are the cons of the ship? You know, with the ship being this nice and capable, having a size 4 nose cannon, I thought to myself, nah, there's gotta be some flaws to it. And here are the sum that I found. As I mentioned earlier, with a stock quantum drive, you won't be able to quantum drive from Port Olisar all the way to Microtech. But until you upgrade that, you will have to make constant refuel trips from station to station or plant to planet. Another one was that the cargo hatch typically seen with other 300 series is no longer accessible for storage, but instead uses the space to house the size 4 missiles. Although I wouldn't really consider that as a con as you do get extra missiles with the ship. And lastly was the stock weapons themselves. The loadout is great except when your ballistic repeaters run out of ammo then you will have to rely on a slow and cumbersome laser cannon. I found that I prefer playing with gimbaled assisted weapons, gatling guns on the wings, and this way you're able to send more shots down the range if you do not miss. The large size 4 cannon on the nose is also due for an upgrade. I would prefer using some sort of disruption repeater because as of 3.11, disruptors do quite rip shields off other people's ships. If you wanted to still do damage with the nose cannon, I would opt out for a CNF laser repeater if you want something with a sustained DPS that can also do damage, or maybe even a size 4 gatling gun as well. Gimbling the nose gun is really up to you. I typically leave the nose gun fixed, but if you want the most efficient way of taking down pirates and other players, and even security forces, you'll have an easier time tracking and eliminating. So what do I think about the 325A? Overall, it is a really nice ship, and it's definitely an upgrade from the 300i. You do lose that cargo space, but you do make up for it with that size 4 nose gun. What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe, any feedback would be appreciated. And if you're interested in checking the game out, don't forget to use my referral code, which I'll put up in the screen. With that being said, this is Zenith Gaming, and until next time, I will see you out in the universe.